want to ask you about idealism and, and about whether when you were writing this, because one of the really appealing things about the Spanish Civil War is thinking of all these young people that were so moved by this idealism that they left their homes and went over to Spain and fought. Um, and I was wondering whether you were thinking about current media portrayals of young people, especially teenagers and the riots, and how they're often portrayed as being very materialistic and very apolitical um, and very uninspired, and whether you were either kind of hoping to inspire them by reading this book, or whether you were, um, I don't know, whether you had a kind of idea that actually that's not a fair portrayal of teenagers now or then or whatever. Or... Well, the funny thing was I started writing the book, the, one of the scenes I wrote, rewrote and rewrote most often was the opening chapter, which is set in the Battle of Cable Street. And I, when I first wrote, the first time I wrote it, I thought, oh, God, you know, none of these children reading, they'll have no idea what it's like to go on a demonstration. And then, so lo and behold, they knew exactly what it was like to be killed and charged by a police horse by the time I'd finished writing the book. And, and that sort of gave me hope. <laughs> but, um, I think it was, so it was a mixture, really. Of, I, I don't think I was... Um, I don't think I'd, I, I don't think I berate the youth of today, nor do I... Was I thinking this is going to be a huge wake-up call? But I was hoping very much that it would speak to that. Um, I, I think. I think. I think. I think. When you're a teenager, I think that is the time when you are most open to ideas and most open to um, to being intrigued by politics. And and I think one of the things about. Um, I mean, I was really, key, I was really keen to present a different picture of 1930s communism. I must say, because um, I had had a text message from my daughter a, quite a few years ago now. She'd been on holiday with a, um, a friend, and, and it was a very sad text message saying that my friend says that all communists are evil, <laughs> and, um, and you know, obviously she absolutely adored her great grandfather, and, and and so on. I thought, right, okay, let's just show what um, what what else. Um, can, um, you know what, what, what else was going on and what, what these people were doing. Um, but I also felt that there are all sorts of parallels today with the 1930s. You know, we're in another period of, um, of economic depression. We're in another period where extremist politics is on the rise. And um, and so yes, there was a sense that I wanted to get people thinking about these things, not necessarily, I, want, I don't feel I'm presenting answers, I don't think I'm saying go off and fight, but you know, there are people go, There are people going off to fight other people's wars, there are also people making decisions about bombing other people's countries, you know, it's, it's all relevant, and I, th I, think, I think one of the reasons why the Spanish Civil War is, well A, it's the war that I think had the most books written about it of any war, which also is very daunting because it makes me think, oh my God, why am I writing another one? <laughs> you know, what am I adding to this? And the other thing is, I think it's one that really provokes incredibly intense and um, polarised discussion whenever it crops up. Um, so, you know, any newspaper article, what well, you've, you've experienced this, haven't you, Michael? Any newspaper article, everybody will start writing and there'll be absolute ding-dongs in all the comment sections on the, online and in any forum and um, the, there are lots of, you know, there are, there's so much unfinished business with it, um, really, um, and so many things that are still, still open. So it's, it's you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great way of entering history, you know, making history matter, so showing why history is meaningful, I think. Oh, well, my question was, you've obviously done lots and lots and lots of research, <laughs> and I was just wondering if you found it hard fitting that into the narrative, or like, what did you, what you felt you had to cut out? Um, I did a lot of revising. I wrote one very long version, I cut it right back, I added some more to it. <laughs> um, it was tricky. Um, I hope I've made it work. I don't know. Um, I, um, it's always a constant tension, isn't it, for all people writing historical novels or anything that isn't just coming up from inside you, is how we use that research so that it's embedded in the plot mm. I think you have, yes, mm. almost certainly. I was going to ask you, actually, um, I mean, this, uh, Lydia's life overlaps with mine in a variety of ways, that her background is very similar to mine and so on. 
Um, and the Spanish Civil War was like a, a weekly conversation, I should think, in my home when I was a child. Um, my mother I was just sort of had the role as a kind of seer in the family to kind of recount the history of the world, which started apparently in 1919. I didn't know that. <laughs> seemed to anyway. um, and my feeling as a child growing up, and in fact, and a new thought that I've just had, um, is that the key thing about Spain, the way in which my parents talked about it, was that above all it was the testing ground, and it was the testing ground for Nazism, it was the testing ground for various ideas on the left, anarchism, communism, um, idealism, as well just as a sort of notion. Um, but also, yes, a testing ground for all those brigaders who went, some of whom I knew, and I've even interviewed for the World Service, you know the programme, we did a half hour programme for the World oh, Service yes. with them. Um, was that with Sam Lesser? Uh, it, no. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, I did. Uh, it was art of the Spanish Civil War. There was an exhibition of the posters. Um, we did a program about it. Um, so there's the testing ground aspect. And then the other aspect is I was just thinking the other day is that I don't know how you feel about your relatives, but I think, particularly for Jewish in background, is that many of them emerged from that period, not have the war having been won, but that they lost. Right. This may seem strange to those of you who don't have that background, but I think plenty of Jews, particularly communist Jews, came out of the war in 1945. Have you won the war? No, we've lost it. And you lost it in Spain, and then you lost it because of the camps. And then the fact that Nazi, the German Nazi was defeated, yes, but the Franco was still there. So there was a strong sense, I can now see in my own family, that when my parents told her, and then there was another defeat, which was that Communism was complete crap anyway, <laughs> right? But Stalinism was crap. That was, you know, and that was, so that that was then like kind of the next defeat, which my father then spent the rest of his life trying to figure out. Uh, long arguments until three o'clock in the morning with me and the rest of it. In the book, and when you wrote it, did you have that sense? Go all the way back. Did you have a sense of this testing that this was this? Do you have that sense about it in your family? Because that was so powerful in my family, was the sense that Spain, also talking to Sam Lesser, Sam Russell, who died just recently, was one of the brigaders who I knew quite well, who said, your mother, she was so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, all right, Sam. Um, <laughs> um, did you have a sense that it was a test around? Because the, 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 your English people, your British people, they're tested, but anyway, ask them. The funny thing was, I think another reason I wrote the book was because I, I felt that actually there'd been a silence about Spain. I felt that almost... I wonder if it was just such a disappointment that it just wasn't spoken about. I knew nothing about Spain when I was a child. I mean, apart from, and then I started reading, you know, Jessica Mitford and George Orwell and Hemingway and so on, and then gradually I started reading other stuff um, bit by bit. But, um, but it was almost like, it was almost unspeakable, I think. So do you find that now that you've worked on um, this particular book and you've worked on the Spanish Civil War, Will you be going deeper into it, or is there another war or issue you're going to be writing about next? Um, yes, and yes, and yes. If you see what I'm um, there's another one, and then I actually, I, I actually really want to come back to the aftermath and the issue of the concentration camps, um, because I think that's something that people really don't know about. But funnily enough, they actually come up sideways in the other thing which I'm working on. But I'm, I won't talk too much about that. Anymore. Um, but that was just a, that was a, that was just a strange chance. But I'm, 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 the, the next thing is the next thing I'm working on takes place shortly after um, after the end of this, and then keep going time if not in place. So do, do we meet them um, again? Um, <laughs> I don't know yet. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I so really enjoyed the book, and I, I, I won't give too much away. I don't want to spoil anything. But I love the way you develop George's kind of awareness of, you know, his, his kind of sense of right and wrong and the fact that he had to do something about it. I thought that was very well done. Mm, very touching. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Quite a few George fans here. <laughs> George, not be George. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd like to thank um, Lydia for the conversation and her reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.